Good morning, people. Yes, we're getting started on time. Today, I want to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart. That is value versus time. How to get paid for the most, for the least amount of time for your business. Now, what I want everyone to do on this stream is to donate, support the community with a super chat of $5. And there's going to be some more good stuff coming. One of the things that creates a problem for people is you have folks who are looking at the numbers the wrong way. You have people who are not paying attention to how money is made, how money is spent, how money is harnessed. There's an expression, I'm going to touch that in a minute, that many people say, but they really don't understand. So once again, for this Hustlers training, Father our Super Chat, plus I'm getting ready to do some other stuff. So hold on. All right. Now, one of the things that we need to address here, and I'm going to write this down, put this up in the, the G-verse, and good morning. Hopefully everyone is having a lovely Sunday day. It's not too hard. It's not too crazy out here. Very interesting. All right. So let's kind of get off into <clears throat> value in time. Let's see. Let's start at this expression that all of us have heard, but we really don't put a lot of credence in it. So I'm going to hit a sacred cow upside the head. <clears throat> Everyone that works 40 hours a week should have housing, health care, daycare. You, you hear this all of the time. And this is the magic number, 40 hours a week. But I'm going to put this here. Most people with jobs work 23 to 35 hours per week. When you take in lunch, when you take in um, chit-chat, this is what happens. So you have people who are definitely not really producing that much. They're not producing, they're not carrying their weight, right? Now, this isn't to denigrate someone who's busting their hump working 40 hours a week. But here are the numbers. So if someone is working 40 hours a week, but they make eight bucks an hour times 40 is 320. 640. So that's 1280 per month, right? Now, you you have all of this stuff that people let's go yellow a lot of people want this and this 
and this for that. It simply does not add up. It does not add up. And I, I understand and I feel the pain because I used to be in that money trap. And I call it a money trap is because I'm working very hard. I'm doing everything I can. I'm working 40 plus hours a week, yet I don't have enough money to pay my bills for health care. I'm living in a boarding house. I'm not even living on my own. I'm living in substandard housing. I'm living in a room with no heat and I'm working, a.k.a. the working poor. But this is the problem. This is a big, big problem. We let's see, let me see. let me go to the black. The black, we are okay. Uh where is it? There we go. I'm like, what? We are shedding jobs. Like crazy. So all of those and we'll go manual labor are going bye-bye. Now, believe it or not, manufacturing is coming back to the United States, but not like people think that it's coming back. All right, so we're shedding jobs like crazy because we're becoming efficient. We're becoming very efficient. Let's say here is Delta. 80,000 jobs. Here is Uber. Six thousand jobs, but Uber, but Uber is worth seventy bill, and that's seventy billion. But Delta's worth forty bill. This is marketplace evaluations. You could check them out. Now, this is a problem. This is the future. What you're going to have are highly technical jobs that are not going to require a lot of people because of automation, machine learning, um, so many things that are happening that the company of the future is going to be worth more, but will employ less people. This is a problem in a half. This is a crazy, crazy problem. Now, what we're having with this situation is a clash of values. We're having a clash of who's going to watch the regular jobs and who's going to take the new jobs. So one of the problems is most, let's go over here. Most of America can't do the jobs of the future. Now, this is a fundamental problem. This is a serious problem because... This leads to outsourcing and it lowers the standard of living for the average American. And so let's go back to this 40 hour thing. The numbers just do not add up. Now, if you know everyone that makes, let's just say 50, 
50k to 75k can afford housing for the most part where they want to be they can afford a decent car they can afford daycare they can afford this stuff now part of the problem is you have many people like 70 percent of the country does not make 50 to 75 K. So this is another problem. They don't make that money. So you have a large contingency of very poor people who are demanding the same rights and benefits of these people because they see them, they live next to them, they work alongside some of them, and what they want to do is live like these people without the preparation. And once again, like I said, I, I know what it feels like to be in this situation. Now, this is where my life started to change when I went ahead and decided to make myself more valuable. So here's the short thing, rent a crate, panel systems, business environments. So each one of these things, I increased my skill sets. <clears throat> I made myself more valuable. So when last time I had the job, I made 420 my last year. And this was a combination of the job and a combination of me selling stuff for JDA. Now, as long as I was, let's just go ahead and say, regular Glendon. I was making eight to 15 bucks an hour. This is what regular Glendon can do because it wasn't that regular Glendon wasn't hardworking. Let's put that in the red. Eight to 15 an hour. It, it wasn't a matter of work ethic. It wasn't a matter of time. It was a matter of value. When I was in this situation, this is what the marketplace said. I am worth eight to 15 bucks an hour because I was doing manual labor. Service jobs. Once again, I want everybody to support the channel. There should be no ads on this. Uh, it will be a $5 super chat that I want for you for this great training. Appreciate you. Uh, manual labor, service, and warehouse. That's what I was worth. And that was the thing that drove me crazy because I was like, I want to make more money. And then when I did this, increase my value. And I'll even talk about what I got because I will go up and we'll just draw the line here. I learned how to sell. No, I learned a lot more than that. I learned, um, let's put this here. I learned how to prospect, market, sales funnel, close. So one, two, three, four valuable skill sets. Just learning how to prospect can get you a job. Learning how to market can get you a job. And I'm talking about if you become someone a prospect, this is lead generation, you can make 100K. If you can learn how to market and be effective, you can make 100K. When you learn how to sell and build a sales funnel, you can make 200K. 
and when you learn how to close, you can make 200K. So one, two, three, four skill sets that each, if they stood alone, would make me more than this. <laughs> Way more than that. So I put them all together, and then I created a more valuable Glendon. And it was, and it's about education. And we're going to talk about that. Let me make sure I pull this down. Okay. So we're going to talk about education versus functional education. So this is Yeah, I think I misspelled it, but anyway, so this is a degree. You went to school, you worked hard, you got a degree. Functional education is a current in-demand skill set you can become right now you could become a welder spend six months to two years in welding school and you can do this ADK to 150k from six months to two years of functional education versus just education. Functional education is always going to yield you more money than education. Now, one of the things that has happened is we have people who have conflated that education. I'm educated. You know, I'm educated. I should make at least $80,000 a year because I'm educated. These jobs ain't trying to pay me no money for my education. Hello, if your education is functional education, you don't have to look for a job. They find you. But if you just have mere education, and this isn't to marginalize your hard work, the four to six years you put into getting that degree, that's hard work. You did what you needed to do. You had a high GPA. But here's the problem, my dear friend. No one wants those skills. No one. And you're having people who feel because they have education versus functional education that they should have the same benefits of the people who have functional education. Uh, when I was in that boarding house, I took all of these jobs and I looked at their salaries at the time and I noticed something. When you take the doctors out, the engineers out, the millionaires, income from someone with a degree to someone without a degree wasn't that great a difference. And it became more pronounced as the efficiencies kicked in and companies needed less people. There are many, many jobs out there that pay 100, 200, 300K. But your skill set level has to be deep into the functional education. You just can't go to school and get a degree. That Those days are over. They've been over for about 15, 20 years. But the reality of going to school and getting a degree is very much still a thing. The other day I saw University of Phoenix that now that they have frozen to tuition. So whatever tuition you start off paying in the beginning, you keep that to the end. I'm seeing that college attendance, even though there are more women in college than ever before, overall college attendance is dropping each year. Because people are saying, why am I going to go out and get 30, 40 K in debt to get a 30, 40 K job? that doesn't provide me enough money to service this debt. 
hence my video, The Degree Myth. Now, this is where I'm about to teach you a serious lesson. So I want everybody that is watching to super chat five bucks. That's all I'm asking. Support the stream. There are no ads on here. All right, so we about to get into this time and value thing. All right, so I'll just write this up, make sure time. Let's go ahead and put this up. We all trade time for dollars. This is unavoidable for most of us. All right, so let's say, you know, the highest paid people, let me just make that right. There we go. Trading time for dollars. Now, doctors trade time for dollars. Yes. But this is where they're usually at, between $65 and $150 per hour, right? So you have a doctor who, let's go ahead and hit the calculator. So you got a doctor who works 100, let's, no, doc, let's say 200 hours a month times 65. So... That's thirteen thousand dollars. So if they're at the high end times two hundred, because doctors work long hours, that is thirty thousand a month, right? So these are your GPs, pediatricians, and maybe derm. Over here are your specialists. But still, and at 13K a month times 12 is 156. And, and notice, <clears throat> at 156, you don't enter the top 1%. You're in like that 10%, right? At 156. And then at the 30K, that's um, $360,000. So as a general, as a specialist, as a surgeon, after someone who's really good at what they do, then you hit the 1% and you kick it by, you're over it by 80%, by $80,000. I'm about to teach you how to make doctor money as a regular person. So hold on. Once again, I want everyone that is listening to this to support the channel. $5 or more super chat. Appreciate you because we're about to cook with some gas. All right. So first of all, we're going to kind of go back to the 40 hour week. Okay. Just because you work 40 hours a week does not mean that you deserve housing, health care. I know I sound very Republican, but I'm going to break it down in a minute. Or daycare. This is what happens. So you're making between this 8 and 15 bucks an hour. The cost of housing is what it is. It's not going to change. It's going to go up, right? So what happens is someone has to subsidize the cost of housing, health care, and daycare. And that someone is us, <laughs> United States, or the people of the United States, because this is what happens. There are 30 million people plus on food stamps or SNAP. There's only 330 million of us, so that's almost 10% of the population is on food stamps. I want you to really think about that. It's probably higher. So this paradigm is 
subsidizing mediocrity, uh, service jobs like fast food jobs. Fast food jobs were originally for teenagers. You know, if the manager might make some decent change, but the line, the people take your orders, <clears throat> people's like, you want the large fries or the, the small fries? <clears throat> Those were teenagers. Now, just because you work 40 hours per week does not mean that you deserve housing, health care, and daycare because you're not contributing that much to the economy. I know that sounds hateful. I know that sounds harsh. When I learned this lesson, it exploded my mind. It exploded my brain. All right. So this is how you turn value into money. All right. So I spent August 2009 to... October. Let's go ahead and because I had to make some revisions. Let's go ahead and just say December. December 2009. Wrote a book. So let's go ahead and say it was uh, August, September, October, November, December. So that's five months times. 200 hours. So we have one thousand hours into the project. So go to 2011. Collectively, I'm at 1.5 million. So let's go ahead and say at this point we have 3,000 hours in. And you know what? Let's go ahead and say, cross it out, let's say 6,000. So 1.5 million collectively divided by 6,000. So I'm at $250 per hour. Let me make sure 6,000 times 250. Yeah. So I'm at 250 bucks per hour, which is a hundred bucks more than doctor money. So when you create value, something that people want, something that people can use, <clears throat> something that makes people money, something that makes people happy, something that makes people um, thrilled, something that makes people happy, whatever. If you could create that, then this is how you get out of the time for money trap. Now, let's go ahead and examine this. I started making money in October, which was like 560. So let's take the 560 divided by at the time. Six hundred hours. So I was making <laughs> ninety three cents per hour, right? <laughs> That's what I was making. Ninety three cents per hour at that point. But when you create value, typically the value money. is on the back end. When you have a job, you get immediate remuneration. That's your weekly paycheck. You get that. But if you're willing to work one to three years 
with little or moderate remuneration, you can get rich in these United States of America. <clears throat> because value is a slow process. It is not quick, and this is why you got to have delayed gratification. Because this is what happened to me. I'm not telling you something that I haven't done. But also, let's go back to this. <clears throat> let's say, let's go to uh, Pimp and Craigslist. All right. Took me <laughs> one week to write. So I have 40 hours into that. All right. Uh, once again, everyone that is listening to the sound of my voice, I want you to support the channel with a $5 super chat. Anyone can do that. They ain't going to break your pockets because you're getting some serious game here. All right. So it took me 40 hours. In the first year, that book did about 122K. So let's divide 40 hours. All right, 122 to divided by 40. Now, this is very interesting. So I made $3,050 per hour. Now, the reason is I became better and more efficient. So I was able to write a book in 40 hours. Now, part of the reason I could write the book so fast is I did this for about 10 years. So I didn't have to research. I had to write and shape it. All right. So let me just come out here because I will be coming back to this. And OK, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and recognize a few people. Go here. Uh, what's up, Josh? Time is definitely money. Thank you for being a moderator. What's up, Johnny Walden? Richie Poach. Be Real. Stefan. David. 285 Property. Chris Monroe. Victoria. Landon. Shivani Mack. I like that name. What's up, Rudy Dog? Stefan. Machines are doing the manufacturing. Oh, man, that's going to be deep. <clears throat> You're going to be able to have a manufacturing plant in your house in the future. What's up, Michelle? Michelle. Stefan, with all of the unemployed or underemployed people, those are going to have to be to have to have the money to pay for their products and services. Who's going to have money to pay for their products and services? Stefan, that's a good question. Poor people disproportionately spend their money on stuff that they can't afford. So because they're poor, they still have money. They just don't have a lot of money. There'll be plenty of money to buy your products and services in the future. It's going to be about you creating the value and you creating the offer. So they'll be there. What's up, Walini Gordon? Anthony, sounds like the right area is my stock portfolio is heavy in tech. Tech is the future. The future is tech. Anthony Johnson, this also means I have to get my properties for the low because it seems I have to have low rents to be able to accommodate the tenants. This is why the boarding house thing worked really, really well. What's up, Richard? Thanks for the $5 super chat. Mika Long, thanks for the $5 super chat. David Salzi. Thanks for hosting another great super chat. G, part of the problem is people have more entitlement mindset than money. 
I agree. Thank you for the five dollars, Camilla. Don't worry about it. Okay. What's up, Raquel? Thank you all all for being moderators. Ganja, you know what's funny? Certain jobs will not hire you if you're in student debt. I did not know that. That's kind of crazy because I did know some people will not hire you if you don't already have a job. But I didn't know about that. Solid Steps to Wealth, thanks for the $50 super chat. Vaney, thank you for the $5 super chat. Raquel, thanks for the 10 bucks. Pamela C, listening to this made me realize my skills have cobwebs on them. I need to upscale immediately. This is good. This is good. This is what the point I'm trying to make because you got a lot of people out here who have been taught. And let's be real. It ain't really your fault because you've been told, go to school, get a degree. You should be able to do this. But there's this point where reality meets assumption and reality is always going to kick that ass of assumption there's always reality is always going to kick the ass of assumption so I'm, I'm glad that i'm opening your eyes what's up the wild jones report brandon williams thanks for the five dollar super chat lance brown thanks for the five dollar super chat ganja thanks for the five dollar super chat uh, michelle thanks for the five dollars Tiger Shark Studios, glad to be alive. These are the best of times for those with the right information. These are awesome times. Stefan, thanks for the $10 super chat. Thomas Dixon, $5 super chat. Tiger Shark, thanks for the Canadian $5. Love that Canadian money. Uh, the Tiger Shark, this is why I love Glendon live chats and video. Listen, get inspired to exercise, then work on my projects. Awesome. Camilla, mind blown. <laughs> Levinsky Page, thanks for the $5 Super Chat. Josh Barr, thanks for the $5 Super Chat. Don't forget to subtract student loans for the MD, which is a good point. Carlton Hamilton, thanks for the $5 Super Chat. New Jersey, New Juru Girl, thanks for the 10 bucks. Rashad Hurd, learn the hard way. My degree hasn't commanded any real income. Part of what happened is... There was a lot of fat in the system. Let's go from 1920 up to 1975. I actually know one of the like black PhDs in 1975. There were not maybe 300 black PhDs in the country. I know someone. He was probably 88. And getting his PhD in that particular endeavor. But from 1920 to 1975, an employer can go, oh, he has a degree. And for every person that had a degree, there was like 50, 60, 70 that didn't have a degree. So it was easy. It's like, well, I'm going to hire this person who has made the commitment to get a degree. They should be a better employee. Now we've kind of have some problems with that because. Google has put out that a degree is not an indicator of performance on the job. Apple has put out and Microsoft has put out. There was this one guy who ran a company. He would not hire anyone that had bad grammar, right? Well, here's the thing. He's probably lost out because there's probably some brilliant coders who were not grammatically correct but they can coat their asses off all day and what's happening and a good example of this <clears throat> university of alabama was the first program in the south to have black football players so when bear bryant started kicking everyone's ass people start saying we need some more negroes and this is what's happening with the jobs you used to be able to say we want this certain person that checks this box to work for us. Worked for a long time because there was a lot of fat in the system. Well, now there's not a lot of fat in the system. And once again, reality is meeting expectations. Reality is meeting dreams. Reality is meeting, meeting whims. And once again, when Bear Bryant had these 
super fast black players, and they started kicking everyone's ass. People were forced to adapt. You couldn't just go like, well, we're just going to have all white players. We got You can have all white players, and every time you play a team that has a bunch of black players, you lose. That gets a little old real quick. So quickly, everyone started getting black players. Well, now in tech, especially if you're a coding superstar, whether you're self-taught or you have certifications, you can work at Google. Because tech don't care. Now, for a long time, and to this day, there's still a problem with hiring people who are black, hiring women, because uh, the tech world is very white and very Asian. But now that door is cracked open because essentially, if you make yourself extremely valuable, it's not about diversity. It is about value. I can understand why you want to have diversity, because, but this is the problem. Diversity says <clears throat> we're going to have X amount of people who represent these demographics. We're going to have X amount of women. We're going to have X amount of black folks. We're going to have X amount of Mexicans. I think that is wrong. And I say that as someone who doesn't have a degree, someone <clears throat> who didn't finish college, but not to be glib or elitist, but has more money than 99.0% of the people watching this video or will watch this video. And it's because I went and worked about increasing my value. I mean, many people don't believe this, but if you're a man or a woman with exceptionally high value, and we will talk about have to do more than the average, quote, white boy to be put on, I'm going to fly in the face of that in a minute. But actually, I can go into that now. How many of you here bought my first book? There was typos. There was grammar errors because I'm dot dyslexic. I made a mistake. But that book went on collectively, not in one year, but collectively to make $1.5 million plus. So I'm, once again, this channel, I've never hid this face. You've always known there was a black person doing this. But because I provided a high level of value, the marketplace said, here, here, take this money, take this money, take this money. And I want this lesson to be for my young black folks who watch this channel that stop saying that they ain't going to hire me or they ain't going to give me money because I'm black. It's bullshit. It ain't true. But it does fit a social narrative. Because we'll, we'll talk about hoteps and preachers just for a moment, but without you being downtrodden, without you being in a state of lack, without you being in a state of fear, um, they don't have an audience. But keeping you scared, they do have an audience. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, let's go back down. Uh, Steph, I'm reviewing and asking for the money. No matter how good your skill sets are, if you can't sell, what good are they to you? That's an excellent point, which we're going to get into. Uh, Johnny Walden, thanks for the $10 super chat. What's up, Sheila? Johnny Walden. Pretty much, Johnny. Gotcha. To elaborate more on the certification, please build a portfolio. Exactly. Um... Shalo, what course should I purchase to profit my blog? 30 days to 2,500. Cool, Camilla. All right, so let's kind of get into making mistakes. I know it's like, wait a minute, we're talking about value. And this is something that I have found to be true. The All right. The more mistakes I make, 
the more money I make. It seems a little odd because we're taught that mistakes are bad. We're taught that mistakes are something to be avoided. We're taught that mistakes will shame us. All right. I just told you that my first book, my first book ever that I wrote had a lot of problems. And I was able to fix those problems. And I'll tell you what I did. And some of you will remember because you were here. After I got my book edited properly, I gave everyone who bought the first version that copy free. It cost me no money. Just send them a PDF, right? And that got more people to buy it. I remember this one guy said, man, this book has so many mistakes in it, but I've made so much money from it. So this is the paradigm. I want you to say, you know, you can go to Amazon. You can see some of the bad reviews and stuff like that. But I learned so much from making those mistakes because, number one, and this is something for you writer people. Many writers are them under the assumption that if you make a mistake or you have a first book that's really bad, then no one's going to buy the second one. I did everything wrong. I had a crappy black cover. I did everything wrong. But from those mistakes, I moved that to pimping Craigslist, which I made almost three thousand and fifty bucks plus per hour. Because I only put 40 hours in. So what, what I'm really saying is the more experiences that you have, the more money that you will make. Because a mistake is just another word for experience. But a lot of people can't get past that because of their own ego. So I want everyone to say it with me. The more experience I make, the more money. I make. And that's what I found out because uh, the internet, man, they were coming for me, man. They were coming for me. There were people making videos, which proves that even negative marketing can help you. Because I was like, I was hurt. I was like, man, what are these people talking about? They don't know me. Why are they talking about me like this? And I'm just my name in everybody's mouth. And then I know this. My sales went up. So with all of the, I mean, seriously. 2013 was the year I almost came off YouTube. I had people doing hangouts about me, people harassing people who left positive comments. I had everything. And you know what? The money kept going up. And I, I, I had a moment. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. So when you hear someone famous says all publicity is good publicity, they're not lying because that's what I found out because I was just sitting there like, like I said, I only have like 22 reviews on Amazon and some other stuff. And I had people saying this and that. But. It didn't matter because. And this is why I'm really on you guys about getting started, because as long as you kind of stay on the sidelines and you do this thing like I'm researching I'm researching, man. I'm researching. So when I get started, my game will be tight. Then like five years later, and your ass hadn't started anything, you have lost five years of data points, five years of experience. You see what I mean? So just replace the word with mistake with experience, and it's going to take on a whole new meaning. Whole new meaning. Uh, good fella knew. What's your vendetta against affiliates? I didn't know I had a vendetta against affiliates. Don't know what you're talking about. I don't use affiliates. I don't get into that process. But from what I've heard from three people, I respect that if you're brand new to the internet, being an affiliate is the best way to make some money. Stefan, the mistakes in the book had the effect to make you pay more attention to what you were saying. It's nuance that gets an attention of the brain. It's a proven fact. I did not know that. You know, this is something funny, too. And this is something I'm going to be doing for men. I had this guy. 
who sent me this long letter because he bought the very first copy of Making Money A to Z with self storage unit auctions, right? The worst one, the worst one with all the typos and stuff. And he said, you know, I did not graduate high school. He said, but with this book, I was able to move out of my grandmother's house, get my own house, move my pregnant girlfriend into my house. And, you know, he was either, I think it was in Tennessee or Mississippi. And he says, I only make three to four thousand dollars a month. But he said, if I was working one of these jobs around here, I'd be making like twelve, thirteen hundred bucks a month. He said, I work hard. I work long hours, but I am able to make it. And thank you. And this is someone who did, and this is something I really noticed that the people with college educations, they push back, which they had the right to because there were mistakes and typos. But the folks who were not that educated were the most successful. It was a strange, strange parallel. And then the book that became, you know, typo free, grammatically correct, then those people started to get it. So I think one of the things that happens when you go to college is if the information isn't in a straightforward, well laid out grammatical uh, manner, you will have problems with it. And a lot of women. Oh, my God. Women were like on me. They were like, oh, I can't read this. It hurts. my." But dudes. I'm making this money, man. I'm making this money. It's very, very strange that you mentioned that, Stefan. Good, Gunge. I'm currently using a technique from the power of your subconscious mind on viewing, making mistakes from an objective perspective. Okay, and I'm going I'm to stop this right here. And I want you, because I know I got black folks, white folks, I got all kinds of folks watching this, appreciate you, but to my black folks, when you, once you read the book, the power of your subconscious mind, this will make a lot of sense. When you say white supremacy is holding me down, you are programming your subconscious mind to be mediocre. Your subconscious mind doesn't care what order you give it. It's like, oh, okay, let's make this happen. I'm just saying, get that book, read it about 10 times, and it will change your thinking. And when you change your thinking, you will change your life. Since reality, as Thomas says, I said, I don't fail. I just found 2000 ways to not make a light bulb. I mean, you got to reframe it. David says a great takeaway. Gee, you don't need to be perfect for people to buy your stuff. Walmart became the biggest company in the world on that premise. I remember when Walmart used to sell socks, they were like an inch. I mean, they, they were called irregulars. Johnny Wall, you know something about the Kardashians? I think Kim's taking her game to the next level because I know Trump, you know, she, I don't know if Kanye saw this too, but they praised Trump and they got him to do exactly what they wanted. You know, looking from the outside, it looks like he's losing his mind. It looks like, but they got this woman who was unfairly in prison free. I got to tip my hat to that. You know, maybe it was the way to make their brand better. I don't know, but they got results with this president. They got results, so we'll see. Um, let's see where are we with this. Robbie Rob. I'm out of town right now, so I've been missing the streams, but I took your advice to you on creating business systems to work more efficiently and get more money out of my business. Excellent. Rock Stone. Students without skill sets will live in sweatshop Chinese style tenements where they work, where they live, getting paid minimum wage for a tiny cubicle going commissary type meals. I actually see that happening. I really do. Thank you, Michelle. What's up, Radiance? Chris Monroe. Starting a new business is crazy, balancing the act. And I took a few L's recently, but the only way to move forward is to risk failure, even if I trip. Pretty true. Joe Augustine, make a course on how to divorce like a boss. I don't know if I can make that course because, uh, man, I, that was the reason I was homeless. So, All right, cool, cool, cool. 
Camilla Williams, you're so right about programming your subconscious mind. What you focus on grows. Exactly. Joe Augustine, I'm, always, I'm only 20. Good for you. Just trying to cover all my bases. Always trying to find a way to fuck myself over so I can review, reverse engineer a defense strategy. That's something I kind of do. I always look at what's the worst case scenario and provide a plan for it. So I get you. I totally, totally, totally get you. All right. Once again, everyone that's listening to me, I want you to support the show. $5 Super Chat. There are no ads on this this video. There are ads on the but there is no ads on this. Stadium status. Already bought in 10K this month, spending 2,500 a day, hopefully to bring in 2K profit next week. Awesome. Ron Ricardo, I don't watch the conditions, but I love how they integrate with black people. Johnny Wallens, I will soon be 51. 60 is not too far down the road. I have a motivation to do something, and I've been looking toward the oil fields. Retirement does not look good. Uh, I'm 51, too, so we're the same age. I'm not going to, quote, traditionally retire. What I see happening for me is I'm going to crank down this in about 10 or 15 years, and I'll still do it, but it'll be more of a balance of being, you know, just sleeping late and hanging out and stuff, but I'll still work. I'll still work to the day I die, but it's just I have the choice to do that. And also, I've noticed something else, too. When I see all of these newspaper writers, these book authors, all these folks who are 70, 80, 90 years old who are still working and making money. And shout out to Jeff Goldblum, who's 65, just wifed up a 30 something year old woman and had not one, but two kids. Jeff Goldblum is my hero today. I just saw that. I was like, and you know, to, to the older people, if you keep yourself up, you could be 60 years old and marry a 30 some year old woman. You can't be broke down and on your last leg with bad breath and pockmarked skin, Donald Sterling, Weinberger. But if you are like a really good looking man at 60, you, you, I, I see it all the time. Just saying, predicting my future. Thank you, Joe Ray, for the five dollar super chat. Yeah, well, this is what they call live work spaces. They're doing it on an upscale level, and they're going to do it on a low income level, and they're going to be pretty much like prisons without bars. You'll be able to come and go as you please and stuff, but. The conditions and living conditions are going to be deplorable because whenever I see mixed use and mixed income, I start laughing. I'm out here busting my hump, make money, and I want to live in a nice place. I don't want to live next to someone who just got in on the humbug. Call me elitist if you want to because what's going to happen, and this is something that Earl Nightingale put into Lead the Field. He said the neighborhoods but people who are gainfully employed and super busy have these manicured lawns, beautiful lawns, beautiful landscapings, but the neighborhoods where people are home all day, there's trash all around. And I'm like, and when he said that and I drove around, it's true because when you don't care about your environment, it doesn't matter if you have money because they could have, you know, how many of y'all were in the military? You remember a police call? They could get like 30 people around the neighborhood, have police call, clean up the neighborhood every day. But they don't do it. They don't do it. Oh, we got some new super chats coming in. Let's see. Three pistol seven. Thanks for the five dollar super chat. Chris Monroe, stay woke. Thanks for the five dollar super chat. Uh, Smart and Pross, thanks for the two dollar super chat. No problem. Appreciate you. Interesting. Okay, so let's get back to the training. All right, so how does a person who is making, 
who's working 40 hours a week, making like seven, eight bucks, how do they win? First of all, I'm going to write this down a little slow. A little, well, they need... All right, so make sure y'all can see this. They need goals. That's the first thing. Two, they need a product or service. Keep that damn job. Because this is probably where many people go wrong. They quit their job and then try to live off the business income and it ain't enough money for the business to grow and for enough to live. So you keep your job, but you stop working overtime. And four, that's a weird looking three. That's a crazy looking three. All right. Here we go. Four, budget. What do I always say? If you don't have a budget, your new income will be absorbed into your lifestyle. Then five, execute. So let's talk about the soap thing. All right, what's up? Prisons Without Bars makes me think of the Georgia World movies and books. I mean, it's coming, man. It's coming. Stadium stats, man, that's true as fuck. I ride past the hood. House need a paint job. Lawns need to be mowed. Always home, though. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to live with somebody with a humbug. Uh, G, do you do any more 2K month motivation competitions in hiring? I was late last time. Oh, we're going to talk about that a little later. Stay tuned. Uh, Joe Augustine, what are your thoughts on outsourcing your sales process but doing a joint venture? I managed to do that and make 800 net per month, now just off that deal. Well, if it's working for you, scale it up. Jeremy, appreciate the $5. Super chat. All right. So let's get into the soap deal. All right. So we're going to call this person Hustler 99. Female. 49 years old. Two kids. No hubby. Was making, let's see, what did she tell me? She was making 39000 Was short on money. Started making soap. Took 30 days to 2,500. Good Lord. I think I need a new nib for this thing. I'll just slow it down. Took 30 days to 2,500. Six months later, was making fifteen hundred to two thousand a month selling soap. Cause she's always made soap, right? But she never really pushed it. So she was able to buy a car. She didn't have a car and move. So let's just leave it here at the 1500 a month. So in six months, she was able to 1500 and let's leave it there times 12. So she went from 
39 and added 18 plus because I just did it at the 1500. So she gave herself a 45% raise in six months. If you have a job, keep your job. I don't want anyone to quit their job until their job start costing them money. That's the only time you quit a job here at Hustlers Kung Fu. I'm not going to say, oh, go out and vote unless you have a spouse or a mate or someone who's going to pay the bills while you work on your business. Okay. But if it's just you, you know, keep your job. And last time I talked to her, she was doing about 30K in soap sales a year, and she still had a job. She said this extra money was able to provide her the ability to buy a car, to move, and actually save money for the first time in her life. Now, don't buy 30 days to 2500 right now because I'm going to do some specials. I hadn't put it up yet because the specials are going to be for the folks who, who stay with me during the stream and do all the super chat and all this other stuff. But you can literally change your life with an additional 500 to 2500 per month. Once again, I'm bringing this stream and training to folks who are caught up in that 40 hour trap, don't have enough money. Number one, do not quit your job, but you want to one, manage the money that you're making as efficiently as possible. Then number two, add additional income. And, you know, let me go ahead and do this right now while I am. Uh, Let me see, where are we with this anyway? All right, oops, got some more stuff. Uh, since reality, Nightingale Cole is so true, that's why you are, I refuse to live in the hood video is so great. I just refuse. And it isn't because I'm better than these people, ain't it at all, it's just, I wanna keep my mindset straight. And it's very hard to keep the proper mindset in the hood because everybody is striving to be to a higher level of mediocrity. Johnny Wall, and that's why people in African-American neighborhoods need to stop blaming folks, even though some of it's true, and clean up their neighborhood and then they get a better relationship with the police. Yep. Michelle, Michelle, when I was a child, I vividly remember my grandmother sweeping the front steps of the home and the neighbors did the same thing. This is a good point, Michelle. I grew up in Adamsville, Alabama. It wasn't trash. People swept the porch. People mopped the porch. They cut their grass. And you remember how a lot of these old folks would take a tire and paint it and create a flower bed? They were poor, but they were proud. And they kept their houses up to the best of their ability. There wasn't all this trash and stuff running around. But you go to the ghetto parts, that's all you saw. Uh, Michelle, Michelle, amazing. I started soap making last week. Yeah, because the thing is, people worry about there being too much competition. There ain't your soap out there with your network and your friends and your abilities. There's so much money out here for anything like soap. Rub, rub, Johnny Wall. And this crazy thing is it will fix a lot of problems. Once you get accustomed to living a certain way, it's hard to change, no matter how simple it is to change. Truth right there. Hey, I want everyone who's listening to this to Super Chat, five bucks, support the stream. Pretty much. How many times have you heard it's like, I'm just trying to exist? I don't say things like that. I'm always trying to thrive. I'm just trying to make it. Subconsciously, you're telling yourself just to get right there and stop. Michelle, Mike, I grew up in the Bronx in the 70s. Go across to New York. Go do this. Look at pictures of black neighborhoods in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. You won't see that. You'll see well-dressed kids, neat. They were poor. I mean, these folks didn't even have indoor plumbing. But they were good-looking, well-groomed, and they had pride. Makes a big difference. All right, so what I'm going to do 
let me get off in here because I got this up on a platform and I guess I need to turn this on for it to work there we go there we go so what we're gonna do because there's there's gonna be a lot of specials today so All right, so we're going to create a coupon. And it's going to be percentage off because I, I, I do mess that up from time to time. But I, I've got it. And it's going to be execute. All right. So this is in effect now so i'm going to edit the video so y'all gonna kind of like disappear for a minute but y'all can still see me i, I can't see y'all all right so there's a lot of stuff that's going to go down and if you hadn't got the free audiobook get it um 51 percent off Today, use coupon. Execute. Any course at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills. Also, anyone who spends $350 gets lifetime access to disruptive mail plus yeah like i said there's there's going to be some some deals here plus how to get a big dick on sale for 75% off. So if you're already a member of disruptivemail.org, you don't have to buy this. You, you, you're you going to get this. So, But for folks who haven't, because this is how it's going to go. I'm going to explain the whole process to you. I started working on that book last week and it's going to turn into much more than I intended because essentially it was just some, some game, you know, in the videos and stuff. But when I started um, going through the process, I was like, this is, um, this is kind of crazy. 75% and how to get a big dick. And we're just going to put dick. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to explain what section I'm on. Because, you know, essentially... You've got to do some prep work before you get into it. How many of you take herbs like ginseng, hawthorn, stuff like that? Use promo code. And this is why I love what I do. I get to do stuff like this. This is making me my internal child laugh. All right. So this should be under there. Okay. If you watch page, make sure we're where. Okay. Uh, make sure I get these super chats. Uh, 
Uh, Jenny Walker, I'm done with my set. It's very bad. Some of them are set in depression. Wow. When did in when when I was coming up, we had to fix the driveway, keep the grass cut, sweep the porch, maybe mop and better, and not be trash in the yard. This is how many of us grew up, and it's just different. Cedric O'Main, thanks for the ten dollars super chat. Stefan, I used to work with a lady who used to make soap with a loaf of building to it. I used to buy gift baskets from her. Notice the words used to work with. <laughs> Thank you, Cedric. Uh, it's, yes, yeah, uh, it's, well, it was the first link, but it's under the video. It says free audiobook. Torrance Playlet, it's sad. Victoria Gannon, thanks for the $5 super chat. All right, David Tran. Uh, okay. Um, that's kind of crazy. I, I think I need to put you in timeout just for a second because I think that's going to go crazy. Uh-huh. All right, I see it. Uh, Mama Nisa, why all natural Viagra book is going to sell better than Viagra? Those blue pills aren't cheap and your girl won't have to catch you popping a pill before things go down. Dang. That's wild. All right. So let's talk about how to get a big dick. I'm working on the preparation section now. And essentially, I'm going to write it out bit by bit because I'm not going to rush it. Because when I went through the process, I realized that when I did that video, I left a lot of stuff out. But you get the book, you're going to become healthier. So it's, it's really interesting because... To get a big dick, you got to do a lot of prep work that's going to make you healthier. It's going to make you better. It's going to make your life. Like, simple thing like tying your shoes. Like, when I had this additional 50 pounds on me, I had, you ever see, like, a pregnant woman? She tie her shoes, and they're tied to the side because she cannot bend down low enough to tie them in the center. That was me. And I didn't think nothing of it. And then I learned how to prop my foot up a certain way where I can get toward the middle but because I had all that fat and I lost it and I was sitting there. It's like, this is going to be very, very deep because uh, the, the section right now, and this is something that everyone's got to do. You, you got to prep your body to start doing this stuff. You just, cause you could take these things. And if you're not in a good state with your body, they won't work. But if you prep your body and you learn some stuff, cause I, it made me really rethink a lot of stuff, but you go through this book, you go through this process, not only will you have a bigger and better dick, you will be healthier. I guarantee it. I can actually make you that promise. You will be healthier. And that right there is priceless. So under the video, there's a link and there's a coupon. You can get it for 75% off. And the reason is that it's not done. I mean, ain't even close to done because like I said, we're about 10,000 10, words in. Well, no, that's two projects. On this, we're probably about three, 4,000 words. But the thing is, to do these things, it's going to take you probably a week to do. So by the time you do these things, then the other stuff will be there. And I'm going to segment it and break it down by what herbs to take. Because I had a lot of people in the video, it's like, what do I take? Where do I get them? And I'm going to give you the proportions. I'm going to give you the ratios. I'm going to give you um, programs. I'm going to give you programs, stuff that you can take, how it's going to impact you. Uh, you know, I could just say right now, if um, you have heart problems or high blood pressure, you don't want to be messing around your yo yo That stuff will have you feeling like you're going to die. Yeah, your, your dick will get super hard, but you might die while you're having sex. So that's just something to think about. But that's below, and we're going to crank up a lot of training. Oh, uh, there's more. Zero to a million has been updated, so... I need to make sure that I got that situated because um, let me go ahead and make sure that's set up. And we're, we're going to get into some more training. I just had to set this up because I wanted to get this in there. Pricing. Okay, so that's good. That's good. That's good. 
I'm trying the Healthy Body Starter Pack. Anthony Johnson, just black seed oil for, for now. Pamela C will work out after the stream. Victoria Gannon, working on the website, tired of being overworking on the page. The, is, the, is the Small Business Association a good source for a startup in reality? Um, as someone who's gone through it, you would be better off hustling and starting a side hustle because there's a lot of paperwork to fill out. And I think, I don't know what the limit is, but I think it's like 50000 is the minimum they don't. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. But you might be better off with a loan from your credit union. 285 starting a personal trainer on Tuesday. But yeah, so that stuff's ready. Okay. Oh, let me make sure that I can see the stream. All right. Now let's get into the challenges. Yeah, there's a lot going on today. And once again, if you are watching this, I want you to support the stream with a $5 super chat. So let's get into this. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? <laughs> that was crazy. Okay. So we started this, and let's go ahead and go hustle challenge. We're leaving it at 10,000. Uh, everyone started struggling when we got to 10,000, so that lets me know that we need to slow it down and tighten it up. All right. Month of June, ten thousand dollars. All right, now let's say you're one of those people who is working 40 hours a week, eight dollars an hour, and you don't have any money. So, what you need to do one. Keep your job. Keep job. Two. Stop watching TV. Three. Create a service business. Because if you're only making, um, Let's see. If you're only making, let's put it here in red, eight to fifteen bucks an hour. Making fifteen hundred to two thousand will literally change your economic life. So start with a if you have no money, you don't have any money to buy anything, start with a service business. Four resale and I you know with the 51% off coupon you can get 30 days to 2500 you can get never broke action pack and that will help you with your resale efforts and remember if you do the work what you spend today you will make back plus some more money this month if you do the work so, resale is for people with no experience. That is literally a way that even the poorest person, if they execute on a consistent basis, they can make an extra $500 to $1,000 a month tax-free. That's what I'm saying. You can do that with uh, depending upon your area. Uh, good fellow Neil. All right, let's talk about the affiliate thing. And I'm going to tell you why I am not doing affiliates right now. Keeping up with the affiliate committee, that is a full-time job. I don't have time for that. 
I just don't have time for that. And I don't think anyone's going to do this for free. So part of it, and it's not because I think the website has a way to become an affiliate. But this is the thing. Then I have to, quote, take time from what I'm doing now to create a website, to create copy and essentially get off stuff. I know that's making money to do something that I don't know if it's going to make money. That's one of the biggest things. And I think, you know, because there is a way that I can turn on affiliate links on the site. So I'll look into that. But you're going to have to really bring it. Because <laughs> if I outsell my affiliates, there ain't no point in me doing an affiliate in my mind. Terrence, yeah, I used to live in an apartment building. The landlords were slumlords, dirty laundry room, bad landscaping. They only did something when someone moved out to get tenants terrible. 285, yeah, I mean, they do want a lot of collateral. Like Archie Bell and the drills, tighten up your hustle, you got to. So, let's see, how many people, where are we with this? Oh, man, we went way long. All right, so, <laughs> good Lord, I really got into it today. All right, so, this is what's going to happen. I am going to, well, hold on. I got to uh, make some moves here. Hold on a second. I got to pick one. But once again, you get 51% off any course at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills today. And if you want a big dick, you have a coupon to get 75% off of that book, which is under construction. All right. So let's see. I've got to. Man, that went by really quick. So I want everybody to like, get the likes up. And once again, if you've been listening to the stream, I want you to support the stream with a $5 super chat. And I need to get into here and make some moves. Let's see. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. I know which one I want to do. I know which one I want to do. And it's going to be, I got to put this at 12 so I can play. It, it will not be starting at 12, but I'm going to be doing this today. All right. Tell me, when uh, I put up one of these streams, it seems that some people find it and some people don't. Do you get like a net notification like when I just put it up and I don't I don't really um advertise it in my mind, but I see that some people find it and are kind of waiting. And I'm just wondering how that happens. Okay. <laughs> it's just, it's kind of wild how this, um, this happens. So I'm trying to, uh huh. Is this going to bring it up? No, it's not. It's bad. It's very, very bad. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can do something. I need to. Nope. I didn't do this one. Oh, you know what? I know what I can do. Hold on. Once again, if you're listening to this, I want you to. 
super chat five bucks to support the stream and then we're going to get into some disruptive mail oh yeah I got to do all this stuff. Make sure I get the link. Oh, yeah. Um, just to let y'all know. We will be back later on in the day with two more videos. It'll probably be later on in the night. Okay. Um... I'm glad that that was not up there. That would have been pretty ugly. Okay. So, if you want to be king, you got to have blood on your hands. Being a man is dirty work. That's going to be the next stream at Disruptive Mail in about 5-10 minutes. And I will go ahead and put that. Well, I got to make sure I get that link. And then I will switch back. Google really does make a lot of this stuff easy. It really do. Okay. Okay. Uh... I know, man. It, it really flew by the fast today. Okay, you get a notification. Notification. That's funny. Lately, I've not been getting notifications. That's a problem on YouTube. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. All right. So, this is the next stream. Put it in there. So that's what we're going to be doing next. And uh, I like to say thanks to everybody that came out. Appreciate all of the super chats. I like that. So any more questions? Oh, man. All right. So let's see. Uh, anything else? All right. So you've got the link. I'm about to shut this. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't to both channels and like and subscribe. And if you have a comment or want to address anything, put it in the comments and I will see you guys later. In like five minutes or 10 minutes.